Last year was a pretty interesting year for Microsoft. They released a Surface laptop, they improved their Surface Pro device, check out my recent review, and they also improved the Surface Book. They introduced the Surface Book 2. Now, I was really interested in the 15-inch model, and I've been using it for the past week or so and putting it through its paces. Hey everybody, it's Andrew from AMD Tech, and this is my review of the Microsoft Surface Book 2, the 15-inch model. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I have a lot of exciting things on the way to the studio. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. Now before you all destroy me in the comment section, yes, this is a very expensive device. The 15 inch Surface Book 2 starts at $24.99 US. But Microsoft just announced a new entry level starting price of $11.99. Of course, you'll only get eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, 13.5 inch display, and no dedicated GPU. But if you're a professional or a content creator such as a YouTuber that takes this very seriously, you need something that can render 4K video within reasonable amount of time. Or if you're a AAA gamer and you wanna get the best you can in a thin and light laptop, this may be your ticket. But when you look at a similarly spec 2017 MacBook Pro that runs last generation processor, less video memory, and a weaker GPU, you really start to see that this price tag is not all that unreasonable. When Microsoft released the Surface Book 2 back in November, they only released it in the United States as far as the 15-inch model is concerned. That's not the case anymore as it's opened up to more markets. And powering this 15-inch bad boy is the 8th generation Intel Core i7-8650 CPU. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and you can get it with up to 1 terabyte PCIe NVMe SSD storage. And with that 15 inch model, you also get the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 GPU. And it has six gigabytes of GDDR5 graphics memory. But the star of this show has to be the all new 15 inch IPS Pixel Sense display. It has a resolution of 3240 by 2160. That's 260 pixels per inch and it retains a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. It covers the color gamut really well at 131% sRGB and color accuracy was spot on at 1.03 Delta E score. It gets really bright at 447 nits making this good for both indoor and outdoor use. Good job, Microsoft. The blacks are very deep, the colors are very vibrant and seem to pop off the display. Now the bezels aren't the thinnest in the world and there's a good reason for that. Since this does pop off to be used in what Microsoft likes to call clipboard mode or tablet mode, you need to have some place to sort of grip or handle the tablet portion of this laptop. Now this is not a big deal to me as I like to use it in tablet mode every so often and having no bezels would make that really, really difficult to use. So I'm okay with the size of the bezels. Now to give you an idea of the size of the 15 inch model, here it is next to my 2016 original Surface Book. And as you can see, you get a lot more screen real estate and it is a lot bigger in terms of size. As far as the keyboard is concerned, it's a little bit more spread out, a little bit more comfortable. And what makes the Surface Book 2 unique is the fact you can pop off the display and use it in tablet mode. Great for use with the pen to take notes or to sketch some artwork. Really, really nicely done as it's very thin and very easy to handle despite the fact that it is a 15 inch display at the end of the day. Now, if you're using it with the pen and want more battery life, you could always attach it to the display and use it in tablet mode, although it is a lot heavier, but not so bad when you're using it on a desk or on a table. Now, Microsoft does call this studio mode, a la the Surface Studio, and you can see why. You can use it with the pen, but there will be some screen wobble in this mode, as you can see here but I found myself using it the majority of the time in laptop mode, because at the end of the day, this is a laptop first and a tablet second, and that's what it was designed to do. 
Now, unfortunately, they no longer include the Surface Pen in the box. Now, I went over the Surface Pen, the new Surface Pen, in my Surface Pro review from end of last year, so check that out. It now supports 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. It uses one quadruple A battery that's supposed to last up to a year, and it also has the tilt function support as well. I may be doing a separate video on this, so let me know in the comment section below if that's something you want to see as far as artwork, sketching, notes taking, everything thing you'd want to do with the Surface Pen. I didn't want to do it in this video. I didn't want to make this video too long. But again, if that's something you want, let me know in the comment section below. The Surface Book 2's keyboard is shallow with just 1.2 millimeters of key travel. It also has only 65 grams of actuation. That's the amount of force needed for a key press. But don't let that fool you. The typing experience is very good. The keys have a solid amount of click and I didn't find myself bottoming out while I typed and it has an evenly lit multi-level backlit keyboard and I thought it worked really well as far as using it in a dimly lit room. And I love the precision touchpad. It's no surprise that the 4.1 by 2.7 inch touchpad works perfectly with Windows. The device responded instantly to gestures such as swiping up with three fingers to show all the open windows or tapping four fingers to open the action center. Microsoft was hard at work at improving the hinge. It's even better than before, although you still have that so-called gap. The design is pretty much the same as before with some refinements in the design as far as usability and durability. I think overall the design is okay. I'm not the biggest fan of that so-called gap, but it's still there. Anyway, it still works well. It allows you to go into the tablet mode and yet have a sturdy hinge on it as well. The Surface Book 2 largely maintains the same ports from the original Surface Book with one noticeable exception, USB Type-C. Microsoft had previously left the new connector off of its previous devices, including the Surface Laptop. But it's unfortunate, however, that the company didn't make it a Thunderbolt 3 port. Thunderbolt 3 can connect to any USB-C device, but also allows you to use high-speed peripherals such as external GPUs and power dual 4K displays and you can charge via the USB-C port, although it won't be as fast as a supplied power charger that they do include in the box, which uses the Surface connector. Of course, you could always get the Surface dock, which is an extra $199. Most notably, it has two high-definition video ports, and it also has gigabit ethernet. And of course, you can also use it with the Surface Dial. Just like the Surface Studio, digital artists will certainly appreciate it using it on the display and off the display. That's your choice. The speakers on the Surface Book 2, I would say, are good. They're not outstanding or not even great. They're good. And you can fill up a room. It does get pretty loud. There is a hint of bass, and the mids are okay. Now let's hear it in action. As far as locking in, there is no fingerprint sensor. Once again, the Surface Book uses the Windows Hello camera on the front. And it's a much improved Windows Hello camera than the original iteration from the original Surface Book. This one worked really well, registering my face pretty much every time I used it. It was quick and accurate. So this is the front-facing webcam on the Surface Book 2 15-inch model, and it's actually pretty good. And especially, I expect it to have a pretty good webcam when you're starting at $2,500 US. But putting that aside, price aside, it actually is one of the better webcams you're gonna get on a two-in-one for certain, on a laptop, especially when you compare it to the MacBook Pro, which I'm not crazy about in terms of the FaceTime camera, especially on the 12-inch MacBook as well. That's a disgrace, as you know. I've said it in my previous videos and in my review of that product. It's, it is a disgrace having a VGA webcam on a high-end device. But that's for another day. This actually is a pretty good webcam. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Perfect for Skype, perfect for video conferencing, I think. Especially at this high-end price, I expect to have this level of a webcam. Let me know again in that comment section below. 
Now, as far as the camera on the back, it's okay. I wouldn't be taking photos or videos anytime soon with a 15 inch tablet. So forget about as far as I'm using it, I'm not going to. But for those that want to take pictures of notes and you certainly can do that, it has that capability. It's not a bad camera, but I wouldn't say it's good by any means. Again, this is a two in one and I wouldn't be taking photos or videos. That's just the way I feel about it. Now my unit has a 256 gigabyte PCIe NVMe SSD drive. It did well on the reads with 3155, didn't do so great on the right. A little bit disappointing considering this is a high-end device with such a high price tag. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Now to give you an idea about performance, the 8th generation Intel Core i7 processor actually performed pretty well as evidenced by this Geekbench 4 results. Intensive tasks such as 4K video editing can be handled by the Surface Book 2 without many problems. The Surface Book 2 packs an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 GPU. Of course, it has that 6 gigabytes of video RAM that we talked about. That's powerful. It's VR ready and that handles intensive editing tasks as well. I noticed some hiccups with a few games, but overall, this graphics card delivers very good performance. Check out some of these results. Microsoft has also carried forward the power management slider which was introduced with the latest Surface Pro. The slider lets the end user choose between the best battery life, which is the default, better performance, or best performance. And thanks to the unique design where the CPU and required components live in the detachable tablet and this discrete GPU lives in the base, the Surface Book 2 design offers more cooling capability than a traditional laptop would. And it also helps with the noise, thanks to not needing the fans to run as much to cool both the CPU and the GPU, and the fan speeds can be independent. The Surface Book 2 will get you through a long day of work and then some, thanks to its 85 watt hour battery. On the continuous Wi-Fi browsing test, it did 12 hours and 9 minutes. That's better than the Dell XPS 15, the 15-inch MacBook Pro, the Lenovo Yoga 720, and better than the 6 hours and 33 minutes in the category average. That's very good. Now with tablet only, you'll get a little less than 3.5 hours. That's it. Now it comes with a 102 watt charger. Remember there's two batteries in this, one in the tablet and one in the base for a total of 85 watt hours. And it takes about three hours to fully charge both batteries. It uses a surface connector and you could also charge via the USB-C port, just not as fast. And just like the past iterations, you also have that USB port to charge your peripherals as well. Microsoft's 15-inch Surface Book 2 suffers from battery drain during heavy gaming or GPU usage, which is a problem. Now, when it's plugged in with the supplied charger, the battery on the base of the device will drain during certain games if the power settings are set to a maximum performance to fully utilize the power of the hardware. Unbelievably, Microsoft calls this a feature and not a problem that they designed this on purpose. I find that hard to believe, but that's what they said. The amount of drain varies between game, screen resolution, and maximum load on the GPU. Hopefully this will be fixed via a software update, but I'm not certain about that. It may take a hardware update, but who knows? I'll keep you posted if I hear anything further. So to bring it all home, can I recommend the Microsoft Surface Book 2 15-inch model? And the answer is yes. I think Microsoft has hit a home run with this 15-inch version of its Surface Book. The biggest problems being the battery drain issue we discussed, no Thunderbolt 3, and it is expensive. But putting those negatives aside, it checks all the boxes you'd want. Great display, great battery life, great pen support, great design, and overall great looks, making this worth your money. So what do you think about the Microsoft Surface Book 2? 
I really love it. This is my favorite two-in-one, perhaps my favorite laptop of all time. It's that good. The screen is absolutely gorgeous, and I love the fact that it's a 15-inch display. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the 13.5-inch of the original Surface Book that I have, but this Surface Book 2, with its 15-inch display, is even better. You have more screen real estate for things like video editing, for gaming, for whatever product productivity you need to do, you have more real estate. And a lot of people have wanted that. And as far as the pen is concerned, once again, it's a home run. Now, I did review this pen already with the Surface Pro that I recently reviewed at the end of last year. And once again, it's, it's a home run as far as I'm concerned. 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, tilt function support. I don't have to say more. Digital artists, digital note takers already know how good this pen is. This is pretty much the standard right now, in my opinion, going forward. Now, as far as the design, it's pretty much the same design with upgraded internals. We now got the quad-core CPU. It's the uh, Intel 8th generation 8650. It's also got the Core i7 in here, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. But the big monkey in the room, or the big negative, as people will say, it is expensive, starting at $2499 for the 15-inch model. Now, it is a hard price to swallow because you really can get a similar spec device, say the HP Spectre X360, the 15-inch version, the 8th generation processor that I recently reviewed last year, that end of last year, really, really is a good device. This, I think, goes on to a little bit better. It's got a GTX 1060 NVIDIA GPU, 6 gigabytes of video memory, helping with the gaming, if you want to do AAA gamings, and you can do 4K video editing without any problems. But I'm curious to know what you think about the Surface Book 2 15-inch model. The reason I wanted to review it at this point in time is because it's now available in more markets. When they first came out, it was only in the United States. It's now available in more markets, and that, I think, is why I wanted to review it now. I thought it was appropriate as being one of the best two-in-ones on the market that everybody can buy, now, of course, the price tag may be prohibitive for a lot of you, but for those who want productivity, for those professionals that need the pen, that need the digital artists, the note takers, the content creators, a lot of YouTubers will like this because it has six gigabytes of video memory. It's got the 1060 GPU. But I wanna know what you think about the Surface Book 2. Leave a comment in that comment section below. I am curious to know. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.